This setup video on mouse settings covers the basics of what you need to know for PC gaming. There are two primary goals that we consider when we talk about mouse settings. The first goal is to have a consistency between the physical movement we make with the mouse and our in-game movement of the cursor or our viewpoint. The second goal of our mouse settings is to find a balance between the accuracy of our control and the speed of our control. Now, on the first goal here of consistency in our settings, th there's a couple of issues that I want to discuss. The first thing I want to talk about is mouse acceleration. So, instead of using raw data of your mouse and applying that to the cursor or field of view, mouse acceleration basically takes a derivative of your position with respect to time and applies that to your cursor speed or your field of view speed. And why do you want to avoid this? Well, quite simply, anytime you take a derivative like this, any errors that you have in your movement when you're trying to hit that target or um, error in your hardware that might happen will be magnified in the final result. So in short, make sure any mouse acceleration option in your game that you're playing is turned off, but also in your Windows settings under the mouse properties, you wanna make sure that enhanced pointer precision is turned off there. That's essentially mouse acceleration and can carry over into your games. And while we're here on the mouse properties page, let's just change our pointer speed to be 6 out of 11. This allows us to have a 1 to 1 ratio, no factors influencing the counts out from our mouse that is being measured and the response in our operating system or in our games. So even though we selected these settings in Windows to make sure that we don't have issues in games, there's often an option in games called raw mouse input or raw input uh, that we want to make sure that we select. This overrides the Windows settings and basically takes the raw data from our mouse and applies that to the game. So make sure you have raw input uh, on when you can. Now, of course, raw input might require a little bit more CPU value. So if you have a low-end CPU and are playing a very CPU-intense game, it may not be an option, but definitely try and use it when you can. So the final topic in consistency that I want to discuss is to make sure you're consistent between games. When it comes to cursor-based games like uh, StarCraft II or League of Legends, you want to make sure you set your sensitivity in-game to be the same as what you use in a desktop so that you're very familiar with using. When it comes to FPSs in mouse consistency, what we're considering is how much distance we move our mouse in order to change our perspective by 360 degrees. Now, this really gets into uh, discussing as well the balance between the accuracy of our control and the speed of our control. This, of course, is our second goal when we're talking about mouse settings. When it comes to 2D cursor-based games, the sensitivity ideally would be modified by modifying this mouse CPI DPI value. Uh, although if you have limited options for those, then you do have to use the Windows sensitivity and uh, in-game sensitivity in order to get the proper sensitivity that you want out. There's not a clear answer as to what exactly you should be selecting as your CPI value, but typical r ranges seem to be from 600 to 2400 for uh, League of Legends or StarCraft II types of games with a neutral pointer, pointer speed in Windows. So try and be in, in that range and find something comfortable for yourself around that. Now, when it comes to FPSs, there's something more important than just talking about DPI or CPI. Often people also want to talk about in-game sensitivity. Now, more important than either of those two things is the physical movement of your mouse and how that correlates to the, phys the, the virtual movement of your character. So what does that mean? It means you should really care about how many centimeters it takes you to move your mouse in order to get a 360 degree turn of your character. How do you do this? Well, quite simply, uh, the way I do this to be consistent between games is to take a ruler get my mouse, line myself up in a doorway, make sure that I'm directly beside that doorway, and turn myself 180 degrees. Now I do 180 degrees because it's easier to move my mouse 180 degrees with less inaccuracy uh, to get an accurate measurement on my ruler. In doing so, I can times that by two to get the centimeters per 360 degrees, as well as being pretty simple to align with the doorway itself. Um, so, Another question then becomes, what centimeters per 360 degrees should I have? So unfortunately, there's no one simple answer to that either. Uh, what I will say is it's very helpful to go ahead and look at what pros are using, particularly if you can get a, 
a location where it has a lot of the data from different pros. And I'm going to link a, a few sheets of data from different games down below. And what we can say is when you have a range of people using settings, the likelihood is you're going to be near the middle of that range, right? Like that's going to be the average range. So you should be expecting to be around that range. And if you're finding that you want more responsiveness or more accuracy, adjust it from the middle of that range. So um, now that we have sort of where we're placed around, there's one other aspect I want to talk about, which is some games require more accuracy and some games require more responsiveness. Uh, so how do we balance the two? Okay, well, the first thing you need to discuss with yourself is what game are you playing primarily? What type of game is it? And then making sure that the other games that you play, particularly when it comes to FPSs, that you select a similar uh, CM per 360 degree value across all of those games to be consistent. Again, you want to make sure that your muscle memory is building towards this same control across all games whenever possible. You don't want to be fighting yourself in order to make those shots. Now, there's a lot more I could get into when it comes to mouse settings and mouse hardware and uh, a lot of the details that I have left out here. There's some great resources. Again, I'm going to link those down below uh, in the description. So make sure you check that out if you want to learn a lot more than I have discussed here about uh, mouse issues. However, I think what you're seeing here should really get you uh, pretty much 95% of the way to the mouse settings that you need to go. Again, you should get close to where you want to be and adjust to the final location based on that. And where you want to be will probably be in the mid-range of where uh, most pros are playing with their settings. So that's it for this video. So if you have any questions about mouse settings or if you want me to cover a specific game, uh, please let me know down in the comments below or on our forums at MerkGG.com. And I'll see you in the next video.